Okay, welcome back. So we'll have a quick look here at the uh, new Imperial uh, loadout we'll be using for our next uh, dogfight in the first edition X-Wing Miniatures game. So this will be a TIE Bomber and a TIE Interceptor versus a B-Wing and an A-Wing on the Rebel side. And the Rebel loadout remains unchanged. Uh, it's 94 total squadron points. Meanwhile, the uh, Imperial squadron here is 88 total squadron points. So it's the reverse arms race in effect here. Uh, there's mathematically no way to get these two ships up to 100 squadron points using uh, the cards I've taken out of the uh, uh, packaging so far, okay, so to speak. They're all in sandwich bags. I apportioned them out so I we'd be able to explore these one expansion pack at a time. Um, in order to get 100 points out of this, I had to introduce a third ship and downgrade everything. So 100 points is not that important to me. Uh, I do think that the Imperials might be at a disadvantage to the Rebels as a result, but it's the same number of points that the Rebels were disadvantaged to the Imperials in the last dogfight, six total points. So uh, we'll just have to see what happens. I think uh, we, it's a far more even match than the Rebels versus Boba Fett and the A-Wing in the last uh, dogfight. So uh, uh, we'll just have to see. Okay, so now the uh, TIE Interceptor... Uh, we're sticking with Turf Inner. Uh, after you perform an attack, you may perform a free boost or barrel roll action. I like that. Uh, 25 total squadron points, 7 skill level, only 1 elite upgrade available for this TIE Interceptor. Now, of course, we get the modification card for any ship. That doesn't have to be in the uh, upgrades bar to put on there. We're, we're sticking with the shield upgrade. It's going to give that TIE Interceptor 1 deflector shield. I don't know how useful that's going to be, uh, but... That's what we're sticking with, and I'm going to give Daredevil one more try. We didn't use it once, not one time in the last dogfight. Uh, execute a white hard left one or hard right one maneuver, then receive a stress token. Uh, the TIE Interceptors can't do that maneuver, so that's why there's a stress token. Uh, the rest of this doesn't apply to the TIE Interceptor because it has uh, the boost ability natively in the... Uh, uh, actions bar, so this potential damage doesn't come into effect. Um, may might not be the best upgrade, but that's what we're going to roll with for this particular dogfight. I'll try to employ it. It's easy enough to do a green maneuver in the next round to uh, shed the uh, stress, but we'll just have to see. Okay, now as far as the uh, Thai Bomber, lots of upgrades on this card. So this is Major Rhymer, skill level 7. Look at all those upgrades, and they're all reflected here, plus the uh, modification card. When attacking with a secondary weapon, you may increase or decrease the weapon range by 1 to a, range, to a limit of range 1 to 3. This is great for proton torpedoes and missiles. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a few moments. Uh, this, this is great for that particular reason. That's why I'm rolling with this one rather than the other named TIE Bomber. Okay, 26 squadron points, skill level 7. Now, as far now, I, I had to think about this uh, because the Thai bomber only has two agility rather than three. Uh, I thought about uh, the uh, stealth device upgrade, which get, uh, would actually give him three agility until he's finally damaged. At which point, he, go, he drop, the card is discarded, and you go back to agility. I don't like cards that require you to discard them after one shot use. So instead, we're, I've given him the engine upgrade for the boost action. That will allow the bomber to close and escape and hang with the TIE Interceptor a little better. Otherwise, the TIE Interceptor is just going to outrun the TIE Bomber all the time, okay? Now, I had to think about this one for a while, too. We sort of decided that Marksmanship was not a terrific card. However, I see potential for Marksmanship in this build because of some of the heavy-hitting uh, ordnance inside the TIE Bomber. It's an action. It's, it's essentially an upgraded focus. When attacking this round, you may change one of your focus results to a critical hit result and all of your other focus results to hit results. Uh, that's gonna have, that has some synergy with the advanced proton torpedoes, potentially doing some big damage, okay? Now, yes, you can pull off the same thing with just a focus, but that critical hit might make all the difference. Okay, now as far as torpedoes, the TIE Bomber gets to load two, or up to two. You don't have to completely load them out with all those upgrades, by the way. So standard to uh, proton torpedoes, range 2, 3, but because of uh, Rhymer's upgrade, you can also fire these off at range 1. That's the beauty of, of the synergy here. 
but now the advanced proton torpedoes, normally limited to range 1, now, because of Major Reimer, we can launch them off at range 1 or 2. You recall in the last dogfight, the type or the uh, B-Wing never once got to use the advanced tor proton torpedoes because the B-Wing was never within, 10 num was never within range 1 of any uh, assailant with a target lock on uh, to set them off. So that was too bad, but we'll see if the TIE bomber can uh, make better use of these. And advanced to proton torpedoes flavor text here says you may change up to three of your blank results to focus results. That plus marksmanship, big damage, big time damage, okay? Potentially up to five hits on one salvo. That could destroy uh, the A-Wing. Yeah, that could destroy the A-Wing in one hit if all five hits land, okay? So there is, there is room for this. There is, I have a strategy, I have a plan. I don't know if I can employ it. I, that's, that's undetermined. I, I had high hopes for the B-Wing and that just kind of didn't work out the last match. We'll try again, but part of that was because I failed to uh, perform a lot of the uh, bonuses and actions allowed by these upgrade cards, especially the uh, systems upgrade card, which I kind of forgot about, so i got to pay closer attention next match. Now, the uh, missiles. Now, I could have gone for some different missiles to bump up the uh, squadron point total to 90 rather than 88, but I, I like these better. Concussion missiles, uh, range 2, 3, or range 1, again, because of the major rhyme or flavor text, uh, you may change one of your blank results to a hit result. That's great. And, of course, these all require target locks, you see. And cluster missiles. Uh, only three potential damage, but uh, spin your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack twice. So potentially six damage. And, again, because of the Major Rhymer card, we can launch these at range one, two, or three. And uh, so I, the cluster missiles are my favorite type of missiles. Um, sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't. That's true with all this stuff pals it's it, this game is still based around the luck of dice rolls okay but you know you've got some modifiers this is all this is it's just like dungeons and dragons it's just like any modifier based game these cards modify the dice rolls or the potential for damage and that sort of thing or uh, maneuvers you can or actions you can take that's what it all comes down to so those are the two types of missiles we're rolling with and finally the bomb payload and the tie bomber for some reason, it only gets one bomb. I, I don't know. I'd have probably put two or three bombs on a type on a bomber, wouldn't you? But you know, the torpedoes and the missiles—that's got to count for something as well. So we're rolling with the proton bombs. Uh, when you reveal your maneuver dial, you may drop this. You may discard this card to drop one proton bomb token. Then you can yeet and get out of the way because this token this token detonates at the end of your activation phase, and we'll grab this reference card to tell us exactly what the proton bomb does. Uh, yeah, this is the one that I have to read from another piece of paper. When this bomb token detonates, deal one face-up damage card to each ship at range one of the token. Face-up damage, that's critical damage. Then discard this token. It is very, it is imperative that the TIE Bomber get far further than range one away from the uh, proton bomb before it detonates, okay? And it's situational, and it doesn't stay on the, the game board the way the, um, the uh, proximity mine does. That's something else to consider, okay? So, there you have it, chappies. That will be the uh, squadron point loadouts we'll be rolling in the next dogfight. Now, things are going to change uh, the next two expansion packs we open, the HWK-290, uh, I don't know uh, yet, since I haven't even looked at those uh, upgrade cards, uh, whether we'll, if, if we're just going to continue to drop in squadron points or whether I'm going to have to go back to a three-ship squadron in order to keep things near 100 points. Uh, however, once we've uh, uh, play-tested that ship, then it's time for the Lambda Shuttle for the Imperial side. And uh, that's going to be... Uh, we'll definitely probably still be running with... Mm, Two ships, probably. The Lambda Shuttle is not going to be a, a cheap uh, ship to run in a squadron, okay? Because it's a large ship, just like the uh, Fire Spray and the YT-1300. 
And uh, at that point, we'll be ready to crack open Wave 4 expansion packs, okay? So, until next time, may the Force be with you, and I'll talk to you soon.